When one wants to know their orientation, or which way is down, they might use a level, or a plumb bob. And these work great if you're in an inertial reference frame, but as soon as you start twisting, turning, or accelerating, they twist, turn, and accelerate too, pointing in the direction of the effective gravity. Thanks to conservation of angular momentum, a gyroscope will attempt to maintain its orientation even while accelerating. Now we'll look at a few more examples of gyroscopes and their strange behaviors, including these. Since the gyroscope maintains its orientation as the world around it shifts, a vehicle can determine its orientation by measuring the angle that its gyroscope makes. If you put a gyroscope inside an aircraft, you can use it to determine your orientation to the ground. I have here a navigational gyroscope pilfered from the U.S. Army Air Force. Didn't they dissolve in the 40s? The gyroscope is hooked up to two potentiometers, one on each axis. So as the orientation changes, their resistance changes. With a simple voltage divider circuit, we can measure the angle electronically. Ultimately, the easiest way to see how a gyroscope maintains its orientation is with a three-axis gimbal. This gimbal allows the gyroscope to spin on all three axes. So, if the gyroscope starts in one orientation, no matter how much we turn the rest of the gimbal, or what it's sitting on, the gyroscope will keep pointing in the same direction. This is the same gimbal that Feynman used when he was teaching. Now that it's rotating along this axis, it's going to want to stay rotating on that axis. And it's going to maintain that orientation no matter which way I twist these outer rings. Here we have a gyroscope in a box. A little practical joke. We can spin up the gyroscope, and then if someone tries to carry this box around, it kind of behaves erratically in their hands. Now we just need an unwitting dullard to carry the box for us. How about you? Yeah, sure, I'll do it. Well, it probably feels weirder than it looks. Precession occurs when an object that was previously rotating on one axis begins to rotate on another axis as well. This often happens when some torque kicks it off of its original axis. Conservation of angular momentum will want it to keep spinning along that axis even though the object's axis has turned. You'll note the higher the starting angular momentum, the slower the precession. 
So even a small gyroscope like this can maintain its orientation very well if we get it spinning very fast. And because it wants to maintain its angular momentum so much, it'll behave oddly whenever it topples. Even though it looks like it should just fall over, angular momentum keeps it moving in a circle. You've likely seen this if you've spun a top and watched it spin and wobble as it falls over. how an object processes is probably going to be easier to tell when we use this bike wheel. Gravity is naturally going to want to force the wheel down into this position. As with when I held the bike wheel, if it's spinning like this, its angular momentum this way is zero. So when it falls, it's going to want to maintain that zero angular momentum. But we can see that it's spinning this way. So the wheel itself is going to have to spin this way to counteract that as it falls. By putting our flywheel on a couple of moving arms, we have a few additional tricks we can pull. You can see how it's pretty well disconnected from outside torques, but if I try and spin it around this axis, I can raise it and lower it. By unbalancing it, we can see some general precession. And by adding a quick jolt of angular momentum, we can see nutation, which is periodic movement in addition to its current spinning. You'll also notice that if I stop its precession, it simply falls because it cannot maintain its angular momentum.